come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show and podcast that comes your way every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, all you need to do to help us out, achieve that, let us achieve that goal is going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button or write us a review. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like minded folks like you and you can also if you so feel inclined uh you can support us by buying some of our merch michaela why don't you tell us where they can find some of our snuggly t-shirts and other they're snuggly now okay they're snuggly they're they're sexy they're whatever you want them to be go to tpublic.com slash user slash saturday freak show you can find mugs uh notebooks t-shirts baby onesies sweatshirts Got all the flea blanks. There you so. go. So any of the any, like us. yeah, Snuggling all of that section. stuff will help us as we <laughs> uh, endeavor to be the most listened to podcast in the galaxy. Well, I'm going to introduce you to the internet radio superstar. That's not contested. The internet radio superstars. <laughs> Holly, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie which was chosen by John. Sean, what the what the duck, man? I'm about cuddling. Um, we tonight we watched from the year of our Lord, 1986, Howard the Duck. And why? <laughs> why? Well, I mean, <laughs> there's many reasons. I haven't watched this in uh, quite a few years, actually, and I haven't watched this um, in any shape, way, or form, anything close to HD until tonight. So it was uh, it was a nice little uh, uh, experience. And and, and 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 who? Also, you hate it. Yeah. Well, you know, who who directed this experiment? Uh, uh oh, what's his name? Uh, Willard Hayek, I believe. Do we know him? Uh, we know him from. Hold on. He, uh, this was his last movie, so we don't know anything. Shocking. Um, about him after this, but. Willard Hayek, um, he was part of um, uh, American Zoetrope. He went to USC with George Lucas and everything. So he's a friend of George Lucas. They were filmmakers at USC. Um, They started American Zoetrope. Um, And so he's kind of been in that group for, like, ever. Well, Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, Francis Ford Coppola is the other one, yes. Um, So they've all been friends. And uh, and so he's, you know, he's been around that. He's He's been a writer for, like, American Graffiti and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, I believe. Yep. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he's in there. He's directed a few things. He's written a lot of stuff. He's produced stuff. Usually um, with his wife, right? Uh, Gloria Katz. I think she was also yes. part of that. Yeah. So it was usually Willard Hayek or Hayek, whatever. Willard Hayek and uh, Gloria yeah. Katz. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, either way, it sounds like you're clearing your throat, right? Mm-hmm. Like, no, no matter where you yeah. slice it. Or but it I sounds think, like Goofy's laugh. Yup, yup, yup. So he wrote, he co-wrote American <laughs> Graffiti. He co-wrote Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I think he also worked on George Lucas. George Lucas also produced Radio Land Murders, right? Yes. Am I am I alone in the camp that thinks that American Graffiti is like the most boring movie of all time? Am I alone in that? I think it's a really overrated movie. I it's don't really understand the overrated. Hype it. Well, yeah. I think it was one of those movies that, you know, it was uh if you were of the certain age group, right? That was like this was your no. teenage years, yeah. you know. Like yeah. my my right. brother my brother and I were talking about this. And we're like, okay, let's just let's be real. American graffiti is dazed and confused for our parents. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's what it is. Yeah. And then somebody else has American pie and somebody else. Has, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm down the right. road. We're waiting for the next one. Um, Whatever the next American thing is. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know he, he directed, <laughs> oh, no. this was his last movie that he directed, but he also directed a horror movie, I think originally called Messiah of Evil, which I saw just recently, actually, which wasn't all that oh, no. awesome. And a couple other things. I think he's, he's still producing or still, still writing. Maybe. Uh, living I off that sweet he, indiana jones cash i mean i was gonna say he's got residuals and all that stuff he doesn't really need oh, to wait, best defense was his wasn't it the uh yes it was yeah okay the, that was not the tank movie that was tank the best defense I mean, was eddie murphy right uh i think so okay uh so anyway 
Howard the Duck. He's old, uh, so I think he's living off those uh, residuals now. So two weeks in a row now, we have done comic book characters, uh, Sean. I don't know if this was Indeed. intentional or not. <laughs> no. No, we know Sean's intention. <laughs> no, it's uh, not intentional because I actually know uh, nothing about the comic book version of Howard the Duck. Um, I'm glad I mean, you did your is- research. Well, I mean, what was I supposed to do? Uh, I'm not uh, also not interested in the comic book version of Howard the Duck. So, what I if mean, I, I told was... you that one of his first appearances was in Man Thing? Mm. I yeah. believe it. <laughs> Howard the Duck's kind of a Man Thing. Yeah, uh, Man Thing, of course, ties in Swamp Thing, which we did last week. Uh, so he's a Marvel comic book character. Yes. Um, who has now made his way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe because he, he's, there's a brief appearance he makes in, uh, was it Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes. He's, he's in yeah. Guardians. He also jumps back down uh, in Avengers Endgame and okay. joins the fight. There's a little shot of him in there. So I hate it he both is times. On, <laughs> he is on the battlefield. <laughs> uh, I hate that they're trying to legitimize him. I mean, they really are. But I think they're obviously trying to go back to his comic book origins, which, I mean, I don't know a lot about. I know he was a more of a smart-ass, edgier character in the comics than he ever <laughs> They're, they're uh, basically like P.I. Noirs is what they are. Like, yeah. it's... He's a wise-ass, and, you know, he's, he's figuring well, shit out. Yeah. Not all of them, right? Like, they eventually rebranded no. him as a private detective in, like, one of the later, like, in the 2000s or something. He's been around since, like, the 70s or something like that, yeah. Howard the Duck. Um, and, but the, the comic book character looks a lot more like, uh, Donald Duck, if, if I'm correct. Right. Yeah. He's a lot longer. I'm going to say, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Is this like, uh, so, you know, actually I was having that sense when I was watching tonight's movie, because obviously it's produced by George Lucas and it has an infinite budget. Uh, so, you know, there's puppeteers and all sculpting and all this stuff to make this animatronic, uh, half human, half animatronic duck thing, uh, a performer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if they made a live action Donald duck movie, right. This is what it would look like. This is what he would look like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think? Well, I mean, probably. Yes. I, I, Cause I mean, you have to, you have to make it, you know, obviously he's a little rounder cause you got to get a person in there. I imagine there's a small performer actually. Didn't I hear Sean? Uh, one of the guys who performed Howard, the duck was also uh Chucky in the child's Ed play. Gale. Yeah. Yes. Ed Gale gets a special credit at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. He was, uh, the small performer who did that. Yeah. He was in both of them. Yeah. I heard, uh, an anecdote that, uh, he gets more fan, uh, people coming up to him about Howard the duck than he does for Chucky. That's yeah. (laughs) That's pretty amazing to, to... this movie has a passionate cult following, unfortunately. Right. But to to have fans based on your work as, um, I I mean, you are an actor, but you're essentially just a, a, a silent actor at that point. It's very interesting. Yeah, because the voice is dubbed in later, and the head the head is a helmet that's all uh, a puppeteered uh, thing. Um, yeah, it's okay. kind of like the turtles, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, what the, what year was that? That was eighty nine. Wow. This is eighty six. So this Ooh. is like uh, you know you, turtles. You're seeing that evolution of uh, puppeteering and that kind of uh, you know technique. So I mean, I guess if you can separate the movie from the effect, right? Because that is what you're selling this on. Now we're at a point in time in 1986 where we can make a movie with a duck as a lead character. How well did Howard the Duck come off as an effect? I mean, well, we got we to gotta qualify. I mean, how do you mean? As like, just now, like as we're watching it in the year 2021? Yeah. I mean, does it hold up? I mean, what do you think? I mean, what I don't as like far it, as... It, like, like, are, are, are we convinced we're watching a duck? Like, <laughs> uh, was there anything about the, uh, you know, the... I don't want to say like the model making or the puppeteering or whatever, just yeah. the general effect. It's, I mean, did you believe that it was an emoting character will, in the movie? Yeah. You know what? I will say that um, that is probably the least offensive thing in this. It, yeah. I don't particularly like it, but I don't know how you do it better. You know, like, yeah, I'm like, I'm okay with it for 1986. Yeah. yeah I'm Cause the next step okay would be CG, it. I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. It still comes off pretty well. There's, he does emote. He does. There's certain times when he gets angry uh, at someone where his, his, they do something with his eyes. There's twitching, there's human stuff in there. So I think it does, you know, still does pretty good. And you're, you're at whatever ability you have as far as 
the mouth. That's kind of the biggest thing that uh, you can finesse when you have CG. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's Try, really good. <laughs> trying to make the beak look like lips, which is an interesting choice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think you can take your leeway when you're. We're just like, well, it's a, it's a duck being, you know, doesn't. What is accurate to a duck being? Right. Well, in the opening of this movie, I mean, I was like, uh, you know, uh, well, you, you know, you. I guess you're just kind of flabbergasted that this kind of thing like exists at all. But it's from that magical time of, of in movies called the '80s, where they just did mm. all sorts of crazy shit. I mean, if you just look at like the year 1986. I'm sure you know this is yeah. like from the deck or from the year of like weird science, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but you're gonna the greatest time ever, yeah. And wasn't uh, when Masters of the Universe also came into my mind while I was watching yeah. this movie, and that was like the following year. So, um, the uh, just the idea, like, you know, who the, is this George Lucas's thing? Then is it like he's always wanted to make Howard the Duck? Do you know, oh, gotta be. <laughs> I feel like that's the only. The, the only things he makes are things he's always wanted to make, you know? I, I think he did bring it up to uh, to Willard Hayek and his wife to uh, to produce as a movie. Um, yeah, and they went from there. So, yeah, this is, I think... Uh, it's George it, Lucas's baby. Genesis yeah. of George <laughs> Lucas, yes. I was like, this is, this is the point in film when George Lucas just gets the okay for whatever the fuck he wants to do. Right, yeah. We yeah. sign off on because Willow is, I guess, the other big one, right? It was Howard right. the Duck. It was, that wasn't Indiana Jones or Star Wars, right? When he wanted him to go off and make his other stuff, Howard the Duck and uh, and Willow. So, I mean, the way that I remember this movie, right? I mean, I think I did see it as I, as we were watching, and I'm like, oh yeah, I did see this the whole way through. I think I was like 13 years old or something like that. So wow. it's been a hot minute. Um, but I do remember at the time there was a whole lot of talk about this movie was like the biggest fucking bomb of the year. Critics hated it. Audiences hated it. It cost a fortune and it it like imploded at the box office. Now, like yeah. Michaela said, it does have a cult following. Cause I think there was like a bunch of 13 year old kids who saw it and, uh, gravitated toward it and have a nostalgia for it now. Um, okay. So we're saying it's just weird. You got to go with it. It's a movie about a duck on Earth. That's what they, yeah, that's what they want you to, because they jump into it like, here's the duck. That's it. And he Colin, that's exactly. World. He's enjoying his duck life. Colin, that is exactly where the plot stops. It is a duck on Earth. That's it. <laughs> that's the whole plot of the movie. Yeah. Well, this goes that's back it. to I was thinking, like, as I'm watching, I'm like, when the, where did this plot come from? I mean, is this like Mark Twain in a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, where somebody it's gets a, whisked from their, you know, uh, time and place into another place and has to, sur you know, somehow survive, and then they have to figure a way by the end of the movie to get back home. That's the whole goal yeah. is they got to get, they got to solve the problem of the immediate, you know, uh, plot. But ultimately we're looking for that return back home. Like army of darkness right. did I it a couple of years ago. Like, yeah. How many times have we seen that story? Like they just want the return home. I just want to return home. Yeah. And you get the fish out of water thing. Uh, in the meantime, this is masters of the universe. Also. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, um, every story. <laughs> aren't there like three stories. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. Like two stories. But this one starts off, it gives us this, uh, this is why I'm like, I don't know, you know, if this, if you were going to do it now and you really had an unlimited budget, would you just set the whole movie on Duck World? We get a little look at Duck World at the beginning of the movie. Um, it's basically uh, set up as an alternate, you know, American city somewhere except all the billboards and ads and everything is duck centric <laughs> everything is bird puns just imagine america but everything's a bad bird pun yeah mm -hmm. and this is also we're only like five minutes in the movie we meet howard the duck he comes home there's a little bit of a reveal build up to what he's going to look like as you know we see him taking off his coat and wandering around the music sounds like we it's a private detective movie and everything of his, uh, of his duck family and friends and and then we're like, him boom. And, band and, all that. and then, right, then he gets an issue of Play Duck. And, you know, he's looking at the centerfold, and I'm like, okay, this movie's PG. Uh, and then that's followed like a couple seconds later by uh, Topless Duck Bathing. <laughs> 
<laughs> in a yeah. bathtub as he is uh, drawn, like just without ex- any explanation, kind of like that scene in Ghostbusters where Dana Barrett gets, you know, whisked through the mm. door. He is sucked yes. through his apartment and through the walls and into space and into a vortex that takes him to Earth. But on his way, he goes through a bunch of other people's apartments. And uh, yeah, there's like topless duck, full on nipples on a duck. Um, <laughs> I this mean, which I biologically think, makes no sense if you think about yeah, it. But well, I mean, this is why you have to just accept that Howard the Duck is Howard the Duck and that he's just there. Because if you start can, questioning the duck world, you'll go insane. But okay, I'm not so much just questioning the duck world as I'm questioning who the fuck this movie is for. Yeah, right here. Yeah, another, right here. Yeah. I was like uh Because Colin, it's funny you mentioned the PG rating because when I worked at Barnes and Noble, we always had this in comedy. And it said PG, but there was an extra label on it that said, oh, despite this movie's PG rating, it is not intended for children and contains adult themes. And that's the only movie I've ever seen something like that on. Yeah, because, I mean, it looks like a kid's movie. It's a movie about a talking Mm -hmm. duck. You figure that kids are going to be it's based on a comic book character. But this Mm -hmm. is for like, uh, I don't know, the rebellious teenager. (laughs) I can't ever imagine watching this as a teenager and thinking it's cool. I really can't. Well, mm-hmm. see, that's why I wonder if you had to be hit in the in the sweet spot of like thirteen year olds, where you're your parents yeah, are you younger. younger. Eight? How old were you? Uh, I mean, probably, but I mean, it's got to be from like eight to, to I twelve. Can, I was like, I can see a twelve year old being the the main demographic for this movie. Yeah, but even then, there's like a, there's a ton of like sexual innuendo in this movie we're just going to talk about this up front because anybody talks about howard the duck <laughs> one of the things that always comes up, up <laughs> is yes there's there's uh there's potential le- duck sex yeah he pulls a loose condom out of his wallet and thinks it's cute yeah yep. i mean it's like that big it's kind of cute he gets a job uh early on at a uh like brothel or something. It's like one of those neon sex <laughs> a, a clubs. Cleveland a neon Cleveland brothel, yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Which Where, is no apparently Cleveland. all hot tubs, I guess. And a mud That's, tub too. A uh, mud tub. There was a mud how tub. How disgusting. In nineteen eighty five and how disgusting do you think that place was? There's a reason why there was like no real lighting in there, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you could see the walls, ugh. why are your walls green? That's not the paint. Yeah. But I'm just like, okay. So when you were eight, did you get what was going on there? Or like, this is all flying past your head. It's like, there's, I mean, a lot of it, it seemed like, I'm just like, Jesus, you know, I, I, you at now at this age, you watch it and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, I, I, I can, you know, I watch this stuff, but I'm like, who is the intended audience? And like, is this like uh, across that line of <laughs> what? I, I think it's a movie, uh, Sean, you've got a kid. So here we go. This is a movie that if I'm right, you wouldn't show to your kid, but your kid would want to see if he could find it himself. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, yeah, I mean, that's, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, there you like, go. This is, it is, um, this is just, this is like the, uh, like the R-rated Sonic the Hedgehog of its time. Like, this is pretty much what this movie is. Yeah. There's also a scene where Leah Thompson from Back to the Future almost fucks a duck. <laughs> almost. Almost. She's so just kidding. For the, so AD, long. the ADR line said so. <laughs> I was just kidding, yep. Howard. I bet they had to go put that back in because they're like, this is a little too, uh, you know, a little too steamy. We need to put in a line that says she was kidding. Yep. I'm like, if you're a 12 year old watching this, are you like into this? <laughs> this is, like, that's what I'm saying. Who is watching this scene? Yeah, and is I think it is. I, I think it's definitely, it's definitely 12 year old boys. I, think, I, I feel like at that age, like, like your sexual curiosity is so out there that anything in the sexual realm interests you. And I guarantee all, this movie gave kids a lot of weird fetishes. Oh, sure. I mean, <laughs> but Why I'll do you think you, we have like, furries now? You know? Yeah. Probably, but I think what the bigger zero. takeaway. I think the bigger takeaway is Leah Thompson and not the duck, because I know my fantasies never involve yeah. the duck. Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. gonna say like, uh, just <laughs> like not even even the dumb kids are probably just gonna go for Leah Thompson. Yeah, and not the duck. Yeah, well, at least as yeah, as a teenage boy. Um, but I mean, I was actually like somebody texted me, a woman texted me during the uh, while we were watching it. And I told her what we were watching, Why don't you brag and about it? she was like, uh, you know, oh, that movie's gross. The duck is creepy, 
And there's a lot, or what'd she say about like the creepy sex stuff? I'm like, aha, I knew it. Like, that's what you remember about Howard the Duck. How can you forget it, Colin? <laughs> yeah. I don't think you, you can. can forget yeah. that. Yeah. Like, no. and this, this scene when she tries to fuck him goes on for so long <laughs> and it is so much more uncomfortable than her trying to fuck Marty in Back to the Future. Like, I would rather watch that scene. Than Which watch would you it. rather watch? That's what I was going to ask. Which <laughs> yeah. would you rather have to? Oh, Eyes for sure. pin back, stare at the screen and watch. Back to the Future, hands down. It's not even close. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's definitely weird. Uh, so you got to put this movie like on a double feature with Shape of Water or something as Hollywood tries to normalize bestiality. And it's uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, you double feature it with Sonic the Hedgehog. And just as soon as the kids fall asleep. Yeah. This you know, is the, the this adults. is the one that comes on second. Yeah. Why are the Pokemon yeah. movie or something? See, that's what I'm saying. Like, would it be better if they just set the thing, you know, on duck world, the whole thing took place on duck world, but we do that thing where, um, a science experiment has gone gone wrong and they accidentally sucked uh howard from duck world to earth duck world of course is shaped like an egg otherwise it looks like it has land masses everything like that just like earth and they right. bring him to uh to earth on accident um and That's then possible right like you, just because of gravitational pulls and turns <laughs> and stuff, a planet cannot be egg shaped i know again we can't think about it but <laughs> they presented it so now it's stuck in my mind that's the problem you have with this movie sean the shape of their duck planet yeah i've, ex- I've that's, accepted that's, that's what doesn't work for everything, you. but the science of a shape of a planet i cannot get beyond it i'm sorry <laughs> There was actually, do you guys remember this in the duck world sequence? There was an ad for like a guy who was uh, like a salesman, uh, like at an uh, electronic shop with a bat. And he's like $45. And he smashes the thing. And he's like too much. And then he moves on to the next one. Cause my prices are insane. And I'm like, Oh shit. I like had a memory flash. I'm like, that was a commercial, like legitimate oh, yeah, commercial. That's, that's real. Like, <laughs> I can't remember that, what it was. Like, we're smashing prices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's real. Yeah, so he ends up on Earth and has a bad first night because, of course, he's a duck and all these people are just (laughs) because, you know, the idea is it seems like when you land, when you're an alien visitor and you land on Earth, you land in like the shittiest fucking downtown city where everybody's all hostile and, you know, he lands in a high rise penthouse. Yeah, Uh, it's always like awful. All the people are awful. They're rude to him, of course, because he's a duck or they're scared of him or whatever. And then we meet uh, Leah Thompson, who is why um, in New York. What's that? Which seemed, I said, why wasn't this in New York? Which seems like it would be more uh, accepting of the uh, small duck person. Because that one, the attitude of 1980s New York seems like they'd be like, eh, it's a duck. Whatever. Does uh, Cleveland, the Cleveland fowl? No, I don't know. Is there some kind of like duck uh, joke in there with the uh, Cleveland? I, I, I'm missing it. It's going right over my head. You're not getting it either. So okay. I don't think so. All right. It's Cleveland, Ohio, for some reason. Um, probably because rock it was the roll, comic book. No so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Leah Thompson is a rock rock star. Um, she's performing her own songs in this. What do we think of Leah Thompson as a rock star? Oh, sounds good. She's all right. All right. I, this honestly, this movie kind of made me doubt if she's a good actress or not. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was kind of doing the math in my head, and I was like, maybe she's not. Maybe she just gets lucky. I think we all have to do that math with the things we love most. At some point, we're just like, wait, maybe are they not good? Yeah, <laughs> the her, her, that we all have to come to. Her singing oh, man, was Star Wars sucks. Her singing was like the last thing I was questioning in this. So yeah, she's fine. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> what was the first thing you were questioning, Holly? Why you brought it? Uh, <laughs> how many minutes know? are left? Yeah, how constantly. How many minutes been are the left? First one. How many minutes? Are, how long is this movie? Kick by two hours. Almost two hours, almost two hours for a duck adventure movie. Yeah, <laughs> an when, hour of that is a plain bit that goes on way too oh long. God. When we got halfway through and Michaela, you told us there was still an hour left. I was legitimately shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I, did I looked it at too. the group chat. I was like, what the fuck? I, I paused it real quick because I was like, I have to know how much time I've left, which is a dangerous game to play. Yes. And um, yes. I, I was hoping it'd be like 15 minutes. And then I was like, I should probably <laughs> warn them because they probably think it's like 15 minutes too. Yeah, I was like, I oh did. God, 53 <laughs> minutes? What? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a, a movie. it's a movie with a lot of plot, but maybe not a whole lot of story. The story is the pretty simple it's one, adventure. right? He lands... Uh, he is taken in by Leah Thompson, right? 
because she has sympathy for the poor little duck guy. And then uh, she's like, okay, well, we got to figure out a way to get you home. And that leads them to uh, Tim Robbins. Yeah. Tim Robbins is in this movie. Uh, Do we wish he was in this movie? Holly, Michaela. I mean, he's, He's he he understands what this movie is and I don't think anyone else does, but since no one else is, is acting in that movie that he sees, it's just obnoxious, so it's appropriate, but doesn't work. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's it. He's he understands it. No one else does. Right. And yeah, it yeah. makes him look bad, but he's yeah. not bad. We get it, but right. we don't want it. So right. Saying this is like totally inconsistent performances. Everybody's in a slightly different movie than the other. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of over the topness mm-hmm. because Leah Thompson's playing it pretty broad. Jeffrey Jones later, he's playing it pretty broad. Uh, yeah, and yeah, obviously, which, Tim Robbins, for him. his it for which Jeffrey Jones. Oh, yeah, as the yeah. Well, we'll we'll, we'll explain his role here yeah, yeah. as we go on. But he comes, he's the other half of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Tim Robbins is like he's um not a scientist this is what you do you take your duck to the scientist who's going to tell you like why he's here and solve the problem right but he's not a scientist this guy off my ass yeah he's just a lab assistant that's screwing her bandmate yeah and uh so he ends up like taking directing them to the big scientist that's the jeffrey jones character right this is the guy who Mm -hmm. we find out is the one who actually brought howard through the wormhole and then is like okay we can probably you know figure out a way to get you back um just there right there that's like the first act of the movie but somehow that's about 53 minutes because what are we what what's in between there what am i skipping over that you guys loved so much that you want to point out? <laughs> i mean in that, in that first 53 minutes <sighs> it's just a bunch of people like running into this yeah. duck and not having a reaction to seeing a fucking duck there's like, there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of bullshit about her her band and trying to make it big with a bullshit manager who's a total creep and Howard paid. yeah and Howard like saving them from the manager it, it's very odd and it's pointless because he's a master of quack foo and because uh, of course and there's no. actually this movie did something that I haven't seen in a while which is the bar slide where you take your victim and you put them on the bar and you whoop and away down the bar they go um like that wasn't in temple of doom did hayek also like uncredited write a little bit of raiders of the lost ark i don't know I mean, probably uh, he was, <laughs> they all probably did at that point if he's been friends with george lucas so long they're like hey what do you think about this and then he adds that into it yeah um but uh yeah so there's a there's a bit i mean like all of these scenes and set pieces are pretty big you know there's lots of extras there's lots of money that's spent on them as the movie goes on there's you know tons and tons of visual effects and 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 you know makeup effects and all this stuff going on action sequences that were you know they shot everything and used it all um yeah, they did. he uh watching for a little too long well, once they're introduced to uh, Jeffrey Jones, who, of course, that, that was the payoff to the sex scene, I guess, was them walking in and seeing through the silhouette, you know, her kissing the duck and like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, what's going on here? Um, yeah, this leads us into this. Then we're going to. OK, so we're going to go back to the lab where this gigantic uh, like uh, a telescope kind of thing is set up and we're going to send him back. But there's an accident, right? That like burns a Jennings, bunch of people. Jennings has gone back to the lab before them. Jen, Jennings is or Jennings is Jeffrey Jones um, has gone back to the lab to set up the laser to send them back home because for some reason uh, this movie gives us a scientist who doesn't want to capture the alien, keep him here, and learn all about him. We get one that actually wants to send the being back home because he, I don't know, it's just it, it's an odd character thing you don't see too much nowadays. Um, but he goes back to the lab to set it up, and another explosion happens, and they bring down. Else. What's that? An overlord. Is it an overlord? It's an overlord. The dark yeah. overlord the dark of the dark. universe. Yeah. Very good, Colin. Uh. <laughs> That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. <laughs> That's pretty much it. You just need more lasers yeah. out of your eyes. This is where the lasers come in. I forgot about the uh, last hour of this movie. It's way different than the first hour of this movie. Same, but different. More lasers and, and, and special effects in the part. 
Well, the first hour, because Tim Robbins basically plays that uh, character who's like, you know, uh, he's goofy and affable and, you know, he's friends with Leah Thompson. So he does kind of voice the idea that, like, it's an alien. We have to dissect him and find out what his supernatural powers are. And so he puts Howard through a bunch of uh, tests, uh, you know. Do you read minds and do you do all this other stuff? Um, but it turns out Howard's been just part of the evolutionary uh, chart there on his planet. And we find out the whole history lesson and all this other stuff. Riveting. I know. Um, yeah. Howard himself um, as a character. Um, I mean, he's just so. I mean, I guess the first question is, is like, is he the lead character in his own movie? Does he control where the movie goes? That's question number one. I mean, no. no one controls where the movie is, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, that's no very direction. true. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, are the 12-year-olds watching this, is he likable to them? Is he, like, a cool guy? Like, I don't fucking, I just don't fucking get this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a cool dude. Yeah, I think because he's, like, beating people up and and getting into adventures and he's doing all, and he's, you know, he's flying a plane, he's driving a, a, a laser thing. I think kids would like to be doing what Howard is doing. And he's sarcastic, right? Or is sarcastic yeah. a good word? He's um I think he's just kind of a dick, honestly. I don't think he's, I mean, a, that's dick. Dick. <laughs> he's, he's a light uh yeah, he is. Yeah. As he's just insulting, would but you say kids are dicks, so they can identify with that. Yeah, I think yeah, right. <laughs> kids will dig the character because irreverent. How about we say that? Yeah, he's yeah, an irreverent sure. uh, character. He's, a, he's aloof. <laughs> yeah, who goes around insulting everybody? Is there you know because he's the uh, social outcast because he's a duck, <laughs> but he he talks like you know the like uh, an Earthling, right? He's very mm-hmm. aware that he's from outer space, you know mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, they um. So this this accident happens and the dark overlord of the universe begins to take over Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones in these movies, like I always see like he's it's not like an overact. I mean, because, you know, Beetlejuice or Ferris Bueller or whatever you've seen him in. He always has like this kind of it's not like a manic energy. Well, is it there's like a he's like a Christopher Lloyd kind of guy. He's just built cartoony. Yeah, like, that's he's just got the. the- features and he uses them well or it kind of feels like that because he says and this is the thing where this movie his character like explains everything that's happened to him because he still looks like jenning right the doctor but he's saying you know as they're trying to escape and so during a chase scene or whatever as they're piloting a uh a semi he's like you know the things inside me i feel like i'm transforming i can feel like all my organs reshifting and blah 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 and it's doing all this it's <laughs> giving a lot of exposition yeah. to this transformation <laughs> yeah until jennings isn't here i am something else you know right. i am the key master basically is what we've come up to at this point <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much is it weird that the next scene then takes place at a diner? Because they, they don't like go, well, we got to get away from you, do it. It's uh, Leah Thompson and Howard and Jeffrey Jones. They go to a diner for dinner. I, I think the diner scene was completely built around the egg egg moment. <laughs> I think they were like, <laughs> I mean, we got to have an egg scene. So let's get him to a diner, which I have fucking questions about this egg scene. This is okay. where Howard is served eggs uh, and it, that's the, yeah. And he has a freak out about it mm-hmm. i know they're, they're relatives eggs. yeah they're they're not duck eggs right i, I mean i agree it's not like, cannibalism shouldn't be freaking out as much <laughs> but I, I think there's family going on there again we're putting a lot into this howard the duck movie <laughs> but i think there's family there and that's why he doesn't want them in front of him but it's okay if if this were reversed that would be like us going to a diner and there's like chimpanzee embryos right yeah <laughs> not cannibalism see this is what i want to this not is the cannibalism. real conversation I have <laughs> about this movie but i don't think anybody would listen to it like after we get off i want to talk about the george washington with a beak i want to talk i want to go through all that shit there's a really easy fix for this though right so you just make it a slobs versus snobs thing where they go to a nice high-end french restaurant and they eat foie gras instead. And then he's like, oh, this is delicious. What is it? And then he finds out it's duck liver. And then he has to freak out. It's right there. Yeah. I mean, or, I, I would find it hilarious. Or, or if they go to a Chinese restaurant and have some nice peaking duck. Like, yeah. yeah the whole this thing, is lazy. Gonna, the diner is lazy. Diving, 
they're diving into the duck the puns to begin with. Why not do all this stuff too? There's Might only well. so much you can cram into a two hour movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. um, <laughs> only so much <laughs> well this scene uh reveals the the dark overlord of the universe uh so there's a little bit of like a transformation happening we get like some uh mild i wouldn't even say it's prosthetics at this point it's um you know some makeup on jeffrey jones yeah, some, some stippling of some skin and, and makeup on his face his i think his hair is getting a little wilder but this um, is the uh this is the scene where we bring in what I always love about these movies, the animated eighties, like electrical glow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is like, this is like blue portals, mm-hmm. but a little, a little bit past that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I know we didn't get the eighties vortex on for it. Well, we did, but it wasn't the same, you know, it wasn't that Richard Edlund, uh, port or vortex. Um, so anyway, he has a bunch of powers, right? Yeah. And he can uh, levitate things, and so he's like moving things around with his mind, and he's able to shut doors and throw all the furniture against it. And this basically becomes uh, him showing off, you know, in the restaurant. Um, but the goal of the movie then shifts to um, Howard has a key card that'll get him back into the lab, and he just got to get it back into the lab in order to bring the rest of the dark lords of the universe overlords down to earth so now we have to prevent that from happening but we also have to get howard home and i had a question at this point in the movie because we were in cleveland and we went to the lab and then we got in a truck and then we ended up at a diner and then very soon on here we're going to get into a like a plane chase multi uh police car like a big like action scene where we drive for 20 minutes and fly all over the place to get back to the lab and I'm like, where in the fuck did we go? <laughs> the geography the of this doesn't Cleveland. make any sense. Okay. But that's what that is. So I didn't miss anything, right? That is what happened. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much it. Okay. Well, there was a stop off at the, uh, because um, Jeffrey Jones, I think around this point, kidnaps uh, Leah Thompson because he has to, in order to bring one of the dark lords of the universe, she has to be impregnated somehow, right? You got to have that alien baby in you. That's just disgusting. And you're like, ooh. And so he's going to take, and he also has to recharge. This was a thing, right? Because he used all his power. Some more more monster uh, tentacles and goopiness and everything. He's got a, he does it once in the semi before they even hit the diner, right? He pulls out the lighter and then tentacle. Tentacle comes out of his mouth and he recharges through the uh, electrical socket in the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tentacle monsters. Tentacle. Oh, yeah. 80 stop motion tentacle monsters. This stuff goes a long way with me. Then uh, this is on the way to the po- nuclear power plant, right? Where he gets all charged up and supercharged. We know these supercharged because, you know, He's glowing. He's cheap to glow, kind of. Well, he used to glow blue, but now he glows red because he's supercharged, and he and becomes he a little bit more. Green. Yeah. Yeah. Then, right? I mean, we basically just rushed right through this. This is the plot structure of this movie, though, right? From here, you, all you got to do now is like he's on his way back to the uh, the lab, and Howard has to, and Tim Robbins have to get back there and rescue her, get the key card, and you know stop him from bringing the aliens down right that's what i'm saying essentially once jeffrey jones gets like possessed or all intents and purposes it it feels very super mario brothers to me Mm -hmm. kind of does yeah yeah that does same vein yeah because he brings life i guess to the second half of the movie right i mean like i mean i suppose his scenes are entertaining as he's doing his shtick and terrorizing people and uh um but then the movie breaks into this like I, it's. I swear, like it's like a twenty-minute chase scene. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I really should have clocked it, but it felt like it might have been that long, Colin. Yeah, give us some of the highlights of this. Like, what I mean, it's twenty minutes long. So, what are we dealing with? Who are our? Who's going where with who? And and what's happening? Well, we've got. I mean, Jennings steals Leah Thompson to take her back to the lab to you know impregnate her with another dark overlord. And Tim Robbins and Howard, they find a plane in the back uh, thing of the diner, and they decide to fly 
Well, you you call it a plane, but it's like what are those things called? It, it doesn't actually have like a cab, really. Yeah, I don't know what they call it. It's, one with the, it's got the three wheels on it, so you can like drive around, but then drive into the air because it's got the wings on it. It's like a dune buggy with wings. Basically, it's yeah. like an ultra light or a super light or something like that. Yeah, I think so it's got like the big fan on the back that'll push you around and all that. Yeah, so you hop in that, and that's when our twenty minute flight to the lab starts. And one of the weirdest things about this flight. Of the many weird things. Because, again, we cram more duck puns in here. They fly past a pond where there's duck hunting and shit. Um, I mean, they're really going for it. But <laughs> a proof that it uh, manufactured um, uh, circumstances or tension or what have you, like, the police are chasing them this whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the Howard and Tim Robbins have decided not to fly away from them in this movie. Like, their decision-making, they're like, what do we do? As they fly on the lone road in the middle of a field chased by four cop cars. Mm-hmm. Like, turn right, dude. Like, it, it, yeah, you're in the air. Well, yeah, they're there. like fly away. But they're the I guess you know for the folks who haven't seen this, it's not like they're in the air. Air like they can't control the plane somehow, so they're always they're barely able to get lift. So they're always coming down to the road, back up, down to the road. They're kind of doing this like hop thing, um, and that's why they have like all these squad cars. They go through a, a little town at some point. There's stunt work. There's they land on top of a semi. Uh, there's cars going off all over the place and crashing. There's a whole thing with like a, I mean, it's a whole thing. That's where you're it's like, a whole thing. like Many wow, events. they spent like I mean, the, the, yeah, the, that's how you know this movie is a big ball. If you didn't already know that it's a big budget movie, it's like whatever you want, you can do, <laughs> you know, to, to carry this off. It's like wow, uh, all accompanied by score from uh, John Barry. Um, actually the cinematographer and John Barry also worked on King Kong, the 1976 King Kong. Uh, but John Barry was the guy who did all the James Bond movies. Uh, and so like, I kept on going like, that sounds like a James Bond theme. Uh, That's a James Bond score the whole way through the movie, which was weird. Um, I, I might've liked this movie more if it would just straight up be a parody of something like that, you know, cause they're going so far with the duck puns and stuff. Just be a parody of a James Bond movie then, you know? Yeah. And they're working on mm-hmm. like a lot of references to pop culture of the time. Some of which it's like, oh yeah, I, I remember that one or, or whatever. Um, but the, um, the ultimate, like eventually they do get back to this lab and uh, in order to, re- you know, it's one of those things like Buckaroo Banzai, you know, uh, Leah Thompson is tied down on a, on a medical table with the giant telescope thing like pointed at her. Uh, there's a countdown timer, right, to activate the thing. But and this is where I was kind of like, because at some point I got up to pee. And I was like, now, wait a second, because Tim Robbins said, you know, is there because they have to sneak stealthily in and they see that, you know, the uh, dark overlord Jeffrey Jones is going to do this. And he's like, wait, you know, Carl or something showed me something that we might be able to beat him with. That's here. Yeah. And I was like, wait, did, was that like a first act? Did they do the appropriate thing and and show us that in the, no. Okay. No, Oh no. This is just a giant gun. They pull out of the closet. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's like a rail gun or something. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. It pretty much looks like it. Well, so it's what, another, you know, laser gun, which they're going to use on uh Jennings to stop him. I'm like, kind of do. Does it work? I mean, there's a whole I mean they, they run into uh Jennings gets shot, there's a big another explosion, people are thrown away, and uh Jennings seems to be normal. Okay, so just real quick before we even go further, to me, right, already Michaela had, you know, texted, there's like 53 minutes left in this movie. By the time we got to this point, it was like, okay, this feels like this is it, right? I mean, like all your your protagonists and antagonists are together. They got the gun that's going to vaporize him. Once they do, the movie's over. <laughs> one, would, one would hope, Colin. That turned Kayla, out not to be the case. How did we have left? <laughs> There was 17 minutes still left at this point. <laughs> okay, so we're going in. Plenty of time for another chase, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more of redundancy, right? To keep your movie going. So, what happens? What ha- after they blast Jennings, right? And they're like, ah, the world is saved. Then what? Yeah. Now the true demon form that was inhabiting Jennings makes it makes its way into into our lives, and it's a giant 
scorpion thing. I don't know what this was. What this was? It, it was a demon. They called it like a demon thing, but yeah. It, How would you describe this, Colin? Um, when it first opened its mouth, I was like, "Oh, it's kind of like predator-like." That's the only thing I can think. It's uh-huh. like a gigantic, uh, like a uh, some kind of. Um, it made me think of like a fish or something like that, or something that opens up uh-huh. and it has like all these rows of teeth in it. Um, oh, it looks just like the monster in the closet. Like it's like the same head. <laughs> I thought maybe it looked a little bit like the the thing at the end of the thing. Like if you got yeah. a better look at it. Um, what was, it also looks like the, uh, what was it? The, uh, from Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. The scorpion mm. from Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. That's kind of what it looked like too. Right. See, that's what I said. It looks like a scorpion. Yeah, well, it definitely has a scorpion tail that it could shoot lasers out of and stuff, and it can mm-hmm. shoot things out of its eyes. But what I guess I, you know, I guess my interest in the movie picked back up at this point because I've always been kind of interested in the progression of these type of visual effects. Because you went from this is industrial light and magic, and you guys ever see Dragon Slayer? Yeah. So Dragon Slayer was the first movie to use this technique called go motion. Before that, it used to be stop motion, right? Ray Harryhausen mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And then go motion was, it was computer controlled. So they could actually move the model. You know, they programmed in with the, the model and the, um, the camera we're going to do. So you could get a little bit of motion blur. And I think they used that Dragon Slayer, then like Return of the Jedi. That was the Rancor, right? And so that mm-hmm. was 83. So here we are in 86. And I'm like, and we're on our way to, we, I think, and this show established that the last movie to extensively use uh, stop motion before CGI came in was like RoboCop 2, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here we are with the stop motion creature. Um, I got to tell you, I was like, I was like uh, really impressed by this. <laughs> I was like, fuck that design at least does not look like the Cloverfield monster. Right. Yeah. The design's good and it moves real good too. Like, I don't know what it was, but this is like, this monster is far better than this movie deserves. I well, think it's a George Lucas, you know, production. So it's, you're going to throw everything at it. It. Just, it just feels like, it feels like a totally different movie. Like the movie that we start with and the movie that we end with, it's like totally different. Yeah, it's uh, it's too little too late. It's hard to care at this point, you know? Yeah. It's like, okay, you're just pulling this out of nowhere and to what end? Yeah, because like I said, it kind of feels like the movie already ended, right? That we beat the bad guy. Surprise! The big bad guy shows up. Okay. The bigger bad guy. Yeah, and there's all sorts of like uh, energy beams and all this like animated stuff. Uh, stuff flying around that i'm like oh that looks so cool somebody should actually bring that back just animate people blasting each other with laser rays and stuff like that but this scene okay correct me if i'm wrong basically ends in the exact same place where howard shoots the thing with the energy gun and it evaporates yeah i mean yeah basically we have two rundowns and it's uh yeah two hundred yeah in case you missed it by going to the bathroom, which you did, Colin, you got to see it again. Right, that's true. Um, you oh, saw right. this whole movie. Yeah, yeah. was the effect you the same nothing. when it blasted him? Because it like all he turned into sparks and the sparkles were better in the second part with the monster. Better okay, sparkles. all right, better sparkles, Colin. That's what you missed. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so with the alien menace vanquished, uh, then there's the, you know, of course, the the other plot thing that we've set in motion is how do we get Howard home? Right. And but it turns out, like I said, the time the timer is running and the beam is going to, you know, it's bringing the other alien overlords to Earth. There's only a minute left before they get here. And so Howard has to make a choice between whether he's going to, uh, you know, go home or save the earth. And because he's a hero. The hero's, the hero's choice. Man. <laughs> it's always the hero's choice. Yep. So he blasts the thing and the whole antenna array explodes, you know. And uh, so Howard's going to be stuck here on earth. So, I mean, what what's a For duck? many, many sequels. Which I would, I honestly, this seems out of character because he's been a selfish dick up until this point. And <laughs> all of a sudden he cares about the good of humanity on a planet he doesn't live on. Like, I think he cares about Beverly. Yeah, I was like, I think he's just resolved that he really wants to fuck Leah Thompson. I mean, that's enough to destroy a satellite bringing down ultra super dark beings, right? I think. Yeah. The power of love. See, I mean, you needed to. Oh, 
Oh, Colin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, man, I'm like struggling. Like Leah Thompson to me, like I well, I never saw all the right moves. She was in that, right? Yeah. And of course, we'll always remember her from Jaws 3D. <laughs> of course. And Back to the Future <laughs> and its sequels and Howard the Duck. And what am I what else am I missing? Space Camp. Some kind of wonderful. Yeah. Space Camp. Oh, uh, wait, what was, <laughs> oh my god. I thought what it was, was Space Camp forever. <laughs> what was what was her sitcom that was on in the nineties? Oh, oh right. It was like Caroline in the City or something. Yeah. Caroline in the City, yeah. Oh, right. There was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um but so um well anyway. Uh, right. What What is a, a duck to do if he's stranded on uh, Earth? Um, Manage a band. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Manages a rock band. Because who Who Cause would he, have better connections? He used to write music on Duck World. He had a band. He wrote music before he got. We get backstory on him. He got a legitimate job. He was told to straighten up. He's like 27 years old in this movie, supposedly. So, you know, he was getting, quote unquote, getting his life together and, and uh, you know, he stopped following his dreams and all that shit. So he gets to live them out through Beverly and the band in a song called Howard the Duck. That's very insightful, Sean. You're right on the money, of course. Uh, the yeah, Well, we hear him like uh, noodling away at, at this one, you know, because she's got a piano and he's like, oh, piano. We have these back in my planet. And here's this little ditty. And so at the end of the movie, we're treated to the full on, like it's a streets of fire kind of rock. We're putting on a rock show. Yeah. This is the eighties. Oh, yeah. It's great. Like, oh, I- <laughs> <laughs> what is not to love? Come on. It's catchy. The costumes, it's all, it's a good show. If you're, if you're a struggling rock band, you don't want an alien duck being your manager. You want someone who can get connections, who can like grease some palms and get their foot in the door. This no, duck's not going to do that. And his, and his musical guitar, because that's mus- the show you want to see. <laughs> your manager doesn't have to have musical talent. That doesn't, that's not oh. a necessity. Why are they writing a song about their fucking manager too? Yeah. Because he's a duck. No one. Yeah. Okay. We, we've gone over the, yeah, but he wrote gone the over song. The history of disco duck on this podcast before. It is my <laughs> way to the top. True. He wrote the song though. Right. Uh, I mean, probably. Yeah, because he. So that's he, what he, he was playing. To, on. So he's a narcissist writing a song about himself for the band. They he wrote it to together. play about him. It's a partnership. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Michaela. This is essentially his bad company. Is is what this is. <laughs> Yeah, and the band also has room for a former uh, lab assistants because uh, Tim Robin, Tim Robbins is the uh, stage manager, I guess, yes. right? So I mean, it's like a whole crew, giant production, and of course Which something like, goes wrong. What does Tim Robbins know about stage managing? I mean, fuck all. That's what. Like, yeah. he's a scientist. Why is he a stage manager now? Yeah, because isn't they? They do that thing at the end of they did this at the end of Urban Legends Final Cut. They do that thing where you've spent this whole time with this group of characters that you want to imagine this group of characters is just gonna live with each other for the rest of their lives. So at the end they show that they all got jobs together and right. that's how it's gonna be. Because when you're because when you're a biology student, you're really gonna wanna be a stage manager. You're gonna wanna put that degree to good use. That's <laughs> and like that's a very childlike conceit for a movie. It's like I'm gonna grow up and be a scientist and a rock star and a, you know, like that's a it's a dreams. Why are you dragging him down? This man is achieving everything he wanted and now he has a duck friend. No, no he's not. He's not. What he wanted was to have his own museum. He said it himself. And maybe one day he will get there by being a band <laughs> stage manager. Sure. Yes, that's not right. you can't stage, just stage jump managing. From, no, you gotta walk, folks. Stage <laughs> managing does not open doors in the museum industry, Sean. It's a side gig. You know, people do side gigs for oh, years. Okay, huh? okay. Right? Oh, so now it's a side gig. Okay, it wasn't yeah. okay. chasing yeah. his dreams, but now he it's a side gig. Coming down too hard okay. on Tim Robbins. Well, see, that's okay. but that's the other because thing. Because he gave up. John. <laughs> that's the other thing i was thinking you're like you know like uh you know why are people going to talk to this duck it's because he's a duck like he's right? drawing all the attention he's so they will get like all this the duck but it, what was ironic about it is the the duck wasn't supposed to be part of the stage group right until right. an accident happened. That's right. Like this so, is the credit so scene, and it goes on for ten minutes because he keeps him, he's got to get on stage, and they just hand him a, a guitar and like you're a rock star now, and he's jamming away, 
<laughs> right, yeah, he accidentally did that, pulled that rope, so he, oh no, I'm part of the show now. What do I do? Someone give me a guitar. But see, this is my this is my problem with the whole thing. Why was he ever the manager? Why wasn't he just part of the band? That would have made so much more sense. He's got some street smarts. He was, you know, he was in advertising but back on They Gut established World. that he knows yeah. how to play the piano. Right. So why not just make him part of the fucking right. band? He <laughs> can play instruments. Like there's a song about him. Why isn't he just in the band? Well, he will be now. Maybe it was stage fright. He didn't want to expose the fact that he was a duck, but now it's like the, you know, but he's, but now he's, he's hiring the, the duck. But he's booking the tour. Yeah. Stage, <laughs> stage fright. He had his own band. <laughs> yeah, but that was on Duck I, World. T Duck. Pretend I'm not a duck, though. Not playing in front of humans that all want to hunt him and eat him and eat his eggs. Yeah, he's not. How long do you think he's going to last on this planet before somebody does actually just shoot him? Howard yeah. the Duck, too. Like that hitchhiking robot didn't make it like three cities before they murdered him and left his ass on the side of the road. <laughs> Howard the Duck's not going to make it in this world. No, he's not. And they make, they make that clear when they say that it's duck season, like it's a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. Uh, the music in this movie, all the songs are by Thomas Dolby, who of course didn't... Of, of, of the Dolbys? Of the Hollywood Dolbys? <laughs> the Hollywood Dolbys. Of oh, wasn't Dolby he the, uh, the, yeah. Is he? He might be. I don't know. Who knows? I know. Be kind of funny. Wasn't uh, you know what? She blinded me with science. Wasn't that a Thomas Dolby song? I think it was that guy. I don't know. Okay. Um. So uh, yeah, he like wrote all the songs that performed by Leah Thompson, as we said, with her own voice. Uh, and that takes us to the end of the movie. No uh, closing credit thing. I was actually That's stuck cool. with it because I thought maybe we're gonna tease Howard the Duck too. Mm. No, sorry. Disappointed. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't stick this, with it. I I fired up my movie, laptop pretty quick. Yeah, I saw those egg. credits starting, and I was like, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I did. I did cool. look it up. I did look it up. The chase scene is just under eight minutes. Oh, really? That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> I want, I'm it going is. back and counting every frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then Got there's it. the question of where do they say it starts? Like once they actually get in the in the plane, or did it start when they were running around in the? Aha, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> right. Or they start? Yeah. Are they counting all the time in between where they're not showing them? No, we're. But this is this is okay. Yeah. No, this is just from the plane to the when they crash into the lab. Oh, okay. That's eight minutes. This is that plane that's, content, yeah. Yeah, okay. just the plane content is just under eight minutes. Okay. Okay, that I believe. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess that means we gotta we gotta go around and tell you if we'd recommend uh, whether you'd watch Howard the Duck if you haven't seen it. Uh, so I mean. Again, I, I got to write this down because I kind of I have an I have an idea. Uh, I was absolutely right on the swamp thing. When I just want to say it was like, it's all going to be them and me. <laughs> uh, OK, so um, anyway, we're going to go around. We'll tell you what we thought of the movie. But first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. You're doing the most tonight. Appreciate it. I got nothing else for you. This movie took it all out of me. (laughs) You're doing a good job, bud. (laughs) <laughs> well, we want to remind you how you can participate in this interactive section of our show. All you got to do is follow along on our social medias. First of all, starting with Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Saturday Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, first of all, at the top of this, I suppose I should let you know that MF Matt, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, has alerted us that several people have been inducted to the wall tonight. So there's also the hallway. I'm going to, I'm going to skip right past them. I'm going to stick to the wall. David Pamer is in this movie. You may or may not have recognized him as Larry, the scientist toward the end of the movie. He was like, Oh, I probably recognize that guy from something. Yeah. Well, it yeah. turns out he was also a scientist in night of the creeps, which we watched on this show. And he was also Unger in no holds barred. There you go. Uh, oh, yeah. 
And Nancy Fish, who I got to admit, I know who she is, but I missed her in this movie. She is the homeless bag lady, probably in an alley somewhere. Totally missed it. Anyway, she was the nurse in uh, Exorcist 3, and she was also Rose in Death Becomes Her. So there you go. Congratulations, Nancy and David, for making it onto the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. We're going to put your picture up there, and uh, we'll send you a certificate in the mail. Uh, Now. We're going to hear about tonight's movie, Howard the Duck. First of all, Travis Legler writes in and he says, okay, to be fair, this movie has problems, but when the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off becomes possessed and starts to turn into a monster, it can be kind of fun. But if you watch this movie, the same vein as something like Ernest Scared Stupid, it can be enjoyable and it's not as bad as, say, the Garbage Pale Kids movie. Oh, boy. I I don't know if I've seen that whole thing. Bad? Anybody know? I mean, the you know, heard it bad. Jeffrey Jones is a real life pedophile, so right. I mean, you know, we can just stop watching any movie he's in from now on, so he doesn't oh. keep making. Was he convicted? I can't them. remember. I don't, uh, he I is a registered sex offender, Colin, yeah. and he has failed yeah. to register several times in his life. Yeah, there were a couple guys I think got rounded up in uh, in that bust. Um, B movie poster yeah. vault writes in and says Howard the Duck was unfairly dismissed as unwatchable garbage by some people. It's just incredibly goofy fun. Yes, with a weird interspecies relationship hinted strongly at, but I digress. Also, if you don't end up sen- singing the end theme song for a week, you have no soul, and I shall shun you. Well, uh, get ready to shun. Soulless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I can <laughs> Reshot. That's uh, Howard <laughs> the Duck. Okay, that's all I got. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I genuinely like this movie a lot, partly because of nostalgia, but partly because I think it's a pretty good story. Once you accept that he's a space duck and the rest doesn't seem that weird, the jokes actually land for me. I also headcanon this movie into the MCU and will continue to do until the day they make a movie that directly contradicts this. There you go. That comment Holly. is not for me. Okay. It's not for me. Holly, yeah, it's definitely not for her. If Marvel tries to make him happen again, like that's going to be it for Marvel. That is a true jump the shark moment. Like, just we don't, don't need it. I don't think he get his own movie, but he could get his own TV show at this point, right? I mean, that's I mean, a, he really. They could. just got to keep bringing him back enough in the movies, and it's like now we got to do a Howard the Duck TV show, right? I'm yeah. I'm an avid Marvel fan, and that might be what loses me if they go that route. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam Kaler writes in and says, "I actually thought the Dark Overlords were a very interesting design. I don't know how they thought the natural antagonist for a duck was a clawed telekinetic nightmare feud scorpion, but I assume the default is Elmer J. Fudd. I wouldn't mind." seeing an updated dark overlord in the mcu Ooh, that'd be kind of interesting i mean people yeah. wouldn't know what it's from for the most part you yeah. know but they yeah. mix and match at this point on those movies anyway so yeah, i'm surprised something like that hasn't like found its way into part of the mcu yeah so now you know that it's out there mcu people who are listening to this show and as you're writing your future uh peter gatt oh. says i remember an ad line this duck is no turkey he says, I rewatched this a while back and wasn't too fond of it, which is sad because I really like the comic. It deserves a reboot. I mean, that's on par with the jokes in the movie. That's how they are. So, yeah, I got to take your word for the comic, though. Yeah. Uh, Nick Siebel says, uh, Lee Thompson movies. In 1985, she wanted to fuck her son. And in 1986, she fucked a duck. Fire your agent. With no proof. <laughs> <laughs> um, no C- proof she touched that duck. <laughs> CJ Lewis says uh, that uh, he can't wait to hear our episode on this one. I know how bad it is, but I wore the VHS out as a child. As a 37-year-old man, I have to wonder how Aaliyah Thompson, fresh off Back to the Future, read the script and said, yeah, I can get on board with this. I think it was, yeah, I can get on board with working with George Lucas. Yeah, I was going to say that magic word, George Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I would have said yes, too. Just saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, sign me up. Jacob Kotner writes in and says, duck boobs, traumatized, six years old. That reads like a like an episode of SVU or something like they're going through someone's case file, you know? <laughs> uh, 
Giovanni. And that, is the, that is the correct comment, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Giovanni Regis is life. Uh, says this makes the Stepford Wives remake look like the original Stepford Wives, a deliriously bad, <laughs> baffling movie. Howard the Turkey is a duck tale best left forgotten. Well, uh, well, well said. Well end, said. Would you, rather, would you rather watch this again or Stepford Wives? Oh, ooh. for sure. Ooh. Are we answering that now or later? Yeah, is say, you gotta, yeah, you gotta wait until Stepford Wives is 17 yeah. minutes shorter. <laughs> that's oh. all it takes okay like whatever she's like i've got things to do damn it uh <laughs> hours uh, especially on a night like we're recording right now is a lot uh-huh. uh well reader 1717 said this movie has a special place in my heart and uh panda thug 86 says i love this movie i'm so excited to hear your guys's take on it <laughs> I got to tell you what I'm getting off of this. This is like a, a glow of love for this movie, like coming from the mailbag. It just sounds like, uh, anyway, yeah, last week, them. huh? Good for them. They can have it. I won't fight you for it. Yeah. And, uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called the Stepford wives. Dennis Peck wrote in and said, in honor of this episode, I watched the original again. I only saw this remake once in the theater and I'm happy to keep it that way. <laughs> good plan Theater. What, yeah how old were you what drove you there uh why like i mean you know we've all seen bad movies in theater but <laughs> what was the compulsion yeah that's a choice yeah it is but i went and saw charlie's angels in theater so you know we all make stupid decisions yeah. wait which charlie's angels the newest one uh, yeah oh, that's a problem oh, yeah. that's a problem oh, it's, oh. It, Oh, that's everybody everybody out there is going there was a new one what you mean the one with Cameron <laughs> yeah, Diaz? nobody yeah. knows what i'm talking yeah. about that does feel like it was like <laughs> you're not talking about the like, g movies <laughs> i don't remember this charlie's angels movie you're talking about i, for, I forgot that came out yeah um okay so now we're gonna go around the table we're gonna tell you what we thought of the movie tonight howard the duck starting with colin oh shit colin what did you think of howard the duck um t duck the okay t stands for the <laughs> <laughs> thank you sean um okay well i mean i guess uh i was primed to hate it right so i went into it going like this movie's gonna suck and i guess what surprised me about it was like a it's a very technically uh proficient well-made yeah believe it or not it actually is like a well-made production so it's not hard to watch it um and some of the early stuff i was kind of you know i don't know i'm an effects guy that's my interest and so i was watching like the puppeteer duck and was i paying attention to what he was saying or you know looking for the you know the puppets in the scene or that scene i don't know i could tell you something and at the end i was like really interested once the actual monster thing showed up um so i guess i can see why a lot of people like this movie it um it wasn't like in it didn't feel to me like it was an awful you know horrible thing i think the problem that a lot of people have and we're gonna find out that's some people I'm talking to is just that it's a stupid fucking idea for a movie to have, you know, to, <laughs> it's about a space duck, right? I think it's like, so either you're with that or you're not. Um, I was actually sitting there going like, I don't care, whatever the space duck he's talking to guys. But what I found was that as the movie went along, to two hours and usually it doesn't you know running time you know we're saying those are all relative this one felt extremely long because it felt like uh there's a movie here but it's about 90 minutes and they this is the two hour version and so i think even though there are parts of it that i would recommend or say like that was pretty cool that was neater this is interesting i think in the version that was released as the movie that it is i can't go and say you got to check it out because it was like i just i got bored with it you know it just kept on going and then it kept on going and it was like man if you guys could figure out a way to hone this thing down and get rid of like quite a bit of it um maybe but um right now i think it's just uh it's uh, you know it's too heavy and it's uh the running time so um and the jokes i didn't think were funny but then i never do so i'm, I'm the bad person to ask about that so uh holly what'd you think of uh howard the duck well um i want to take you i want to take you back about a month ago oh no about a, about a month ago uh sean brought a movie called nothing but trouble 
Yeah. Um, you can go back, dear Brailers, and listen, and uh, you can probably make a drinking game out of how many times I say the word triggered in that episode. Um, Sean knew the hatred that Michaela and I felt for that movie. He knew, and he, uh, he brought it anyway. Now, fast forward to about a week or so later. It's a Saturday. Sean was out with his son, and he hurt his back. Now, I was not going to share this story. I was not going to share this story with the Freak Show listeners because I don't want to brag. But I feel uh, like I need to bring it up. Saturday night, personal. 9 o'clock. This is about science, Holly. 9 o'clock of on a movie Saturday night. Discussion and on a Saturday night. Oh, personal oh, back pain oh, to this. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. Saturday night, 9 o'clock. Sean texts me and says, what are you doing? I said, oh, you know, I just did a facial, what else? He says, uh, here's the thing. I hurt my back today and I can't really move. Can you come help? I was like, okay. Without hesitation, even after nothing but trouble, without hesitation, I said, what do you need? And I go to Walgreens at nine o'clock on a Saturday night and I get him ibuprofen and a heating pad and strawberry ice cream. Guys. And I come over. No, no. This, this sounds a, like a recommend. I think we can move on. I drive across town. I drive across town, show up at his house, at his crazy witch neighbor house. I go inside and he's laying on the floor. Poor, pathetic Sean. So what do I do? I do whatever I can to help my dear friend Sean. I told her to stop. Oh, oh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I thought. Sean, what would Sean do for me? I'm sure he would do. I'm sure he would do the same for me. I'm sure he would wash my dishes for me and prop me up on my couch and give me drinks at an arm's length to make sure I can reach them. I'm sure he would do those things. What, what, did, what does Sean do? What does Sean do to repay me? Did last this movie week, kill your parents? Last week, when he murder, hears me, this, when did, he did hears me utter murder the your words, cat. When he hears me utter the words. Howard the Doc, I hate that fucking movie. It solidifies his choice for this week's pick. So it's no secret that I hate Howard the Duck. I'm not reviewing Howard the Duck. I'm reviewing Sean and my friendship, which is on thin <laughs> ice at this very moment. So wow. Sean, over to you to justify this movie. Well, uh... Uh, you're just gonna oh, you're just gonna skip right over my review, John. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, we gotta do with Kayla for you. <laughs> my my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I thought so. I was gonna ask. Did no, you, I'm sorry, go? I'm sorry. No, I just it's okay. I Caught need to know. I need to know his justification. <laughs> I need to know how this movie makes you feel. I get Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. I need to know his justification, but obviously, I do want to hear what you think of it. Then we can edit all of this out. <laughs> You know, We're not Sean, gonna... Sean's really going for the hat trick of horrible right now. You know, he did nothing but trouble yes. right on the heels of nothing but trouble. He brings this. I, I, I know there's a third one lurking out there that well, he's going to bring next. Didn't exactly go over well. So. <laughs> true. Yeah, I, thought I, was, true. I thought I was going up with Howard the Duck. <laughs> That's true. You, no, you no. knew exactly what you were doing by picking this, Sean. You knew exactly <laughs> what you were doing, and that's exactly I, why I'm you picked stoke it. a genuine conversation about interesting cinema. <laughs> you, you like to poke at us, and and like it's not a coincidence that literally last week this movie got brought up, and then you picked it the following week. It's not a coincidence. You guys Beetlejuice it. Um, it. It's been mentioned. Oh, Way to victim blame, Sean. Yeah, way to victim blame. Uh, This this movie, like, in my opinion, has no redeeming qualities. I don't find it enjoyable. I don't find it funny. I, yeah, it's expensive. That's probably the best thing you can say about it. Um, I mean, George Lucas has really had his hands in a lot of bad movies over the years, but I think this is my least favorite. Like, this is, this is really bad. It's, I really still don't know who it's for because it has so much adult humor, but also so much childlike content. So it just, it doesn't make sense. And I don't like, if you're the kind of person that like you're an adult and this is like the height of comedy to you, stay the fuck away from me. Like, because you need to mature your sense of humor because this is really sad. If Now, if this was something you grew up with, if you grew up with childlike, you know, nostalgia, maybe this, you watch this as a kid and you have a fondness for it because of that. 
I understand that, but that's not a reason for anyone else to like this movie other than you. That's your personal experience. That's between you and your parents and their lack of judgment in what you were watching. So <laughs> take it up with them. God. You know? Don't bring it here. <laughs> so that's not a reason. That your childhood is nostalgia is not a reason for anyone else to watch a movie. So, you know, and I like bad movies from my childhood. Maybe some people feel that way about Short Circuit. I'm sure they do. But, you know, I'm not telling anyone to go watch Short Circuit because I loved it as a kid. So, you know, um, no, hard pass on this movie. I hope I never fucking watch it again. I was so appalled when I started up and saw it was uh, an hour and or almost two hours because in my mind, this was an 80 minute movie. So I could not fucking believe that I was going to spend two hours and three ninety nine to watch this movie. <laughs> So and now I'm very, it's, it's frustrating to know that, like, cool, Jeffrey Jones is going to get residuals now because I rented this on Amazon. Cool. A fucking pedophile is going to get I'm money sure, now. I'm awesome. Sure, I'm sure there's a divorce settlement somewhere that says this revenue goes to this ex-wife. So you paid for an ex-wife's, you know, new. I, you don't know that for sure, Sean. I don't. But So th there's lots of reasons to not watch this movie. So just fucking pass on it. Uh, Sean. Well, goddamn. I'm going <laughs> to. Jesus. There were, it's, we, it's ups, downs, experiences, friendships tested. Um, it's it's been a it's been a wild night. I think we all need to take a break from movies. And, like go go outside and climb a tree or something. I think we're we've all no. been inside way too long. No, no you Sean, need to take a break. I was from like, picking. you need. <laughs> no, Sean, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's right. Also, don't go outside because you're just gonna hurt yourself again. So I mean, probably. All right. So how are the duck? Um, I, I, I brought it tonight uh, because, well, because it got, you know, it got, it got mentioned and thing, that just happens for me. Things get stuck in my head, they get mentioned a lot. I bring them here and we see what happens. Um, it's been not good lately, but um, for how the I'm pretty much, I mean, I'm kind of on Colin's side on this. Um, uh, I will say, and I do apologize, when I picked this movie, I did not know it was two hours long, and I do regret that. Um, but this is... <sighs> It's, I mean, it's obviously an odd movie. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time, so I wanted to come back to it. And, you know, again, this is a therapy session for me. This is kind of, this is, bring him here. This is ends up being like the, the, the final say, or at least for me, um, looking at movies with my uh, older eyes. So I wanted to apply it to Howard the Duck, and uh, uh, I, I have offended some people in the process. Um, it's got some good stuff in the last half of the movie. Like, the last half of the movie is far more interesting than the first half. Um, we've asked the question here tonight, who is this movie for? And it really is, like, it's a good question. Because, like Colin said, like, I don't want, I wouldn't want my kid to watch this. I mean, for many reasons. But it's just, like, this can confuse a child, I think. Like, severely. Like, you get a child mm -hmm. that doesn't have a good grasp on the world and then show them this movie? Oh, man, you're screwing them up for life. Mm -hmm. um, there, it's just, but there's... I brought it here tonight because I thought that it's such an odd thing in the you know history of movies that at least we get uh, a conversation out of it. It is overly long. It's not like Colin said. It's easy to watch because there's so much money behind it. Um, but like the writing is, man, yeah, you could have cut uh, a lot of time out of this to have a faster movie. But I think it points more towards kids because they keep having these set pieces that are like little adventures for our characters and everything so in that regard it feels like it's pointed towards them but then it's got adult themes and uh, the infamous duck boobs in this movie uh it's a very confusing movie um i don't think we received any clarification on it tonight it's still a very confusing movie um yeah there's some elements of it that are you know that i really like like we talked about the effects the monsters um the last half of the movie but Boy, does it take a lot to get there. And that eight-minute chase scene does feel like a whole lot more. Um, to recommend this movie, I don't know. It's it's a weird movie. Like, you don't see... I don't, you don't see a lot of movies like this. I mean, come on. Duck main characters, it doesn't happen a lot. Ah! Ugh, it is utterly long. I'm wrestling. Holly, don't shake your head at me. Ugh, <laughs> I don't know if I can rec recommend Howard the Duck. Even I wouldn't want to put anybody through this, so I'm going to say no. Uh, I cannot recommend Howard the Duck. Um, I, I don't think we can come out of this after that conversation. <laughs> there, you like, and you should definitely watch it. Again, it's got some elements, but <laughs> you're putting yourself through a lot to sit down and watch this movie, uh, as you've heard. So no, I think we're going to pass on Howard the Duck. 
Wow, that's a free Sean, show. Sean, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I haven't lost complete faith in you. <laughs> good, 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 good. This was, yeah, again, this was a brought it here for the experiment and not the, I love it so much and you guys really hurt my feelings. <laughs> Wow, but so the, the entire Saturday Night Freak Show says uh, you can probably skip <laughs> Howard the Duck. Sorry, Howard. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. All right. Well, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly, which is after me. And I remember that's right. things now. That's right. Holly, <laughs> what are we watching next week? <laughs> On our next episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show, which is we, next week, <laughs> which is next week, we are going to be watching everyone's favorite vampire movie from the year two thousand, Dracula two thousand. All right. All right. <laughs> you are, you are All right. On this, I think I have. This. I, yeah, I got a copy of. <laughs> I've got it. I've got a DVD of this somewhere. Yeah. Okay. All right. Dracula. There are Fifty copies at disc replay. Yeah, there are. <laughs> uh, okay, Dracula 2000. That's the one with uh, Gerard Butler. Uh, sure is. <laughs> yeah. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs> <laughs>